All right, so before we start this giant painting, uh, this thing is about the size of me. So um, we are going to do an under sketch in pencil and go from there. I got my thumbnail here, or at least the reference that I'm gonna draw from, do that last week. And I spent all the time creating different swatches for the color. So all we have to do is just start and cue time lapse. All right, well, so uh, I kind of skipped recording the grid aspect of the uh, canvas. Gridding the canvas really helped out in the long run when it came to just having everything uh, proportion right. And as we get all along with the sculpting of the nose and the lips and got around to the eyes, I kind of messed up on the eyes, but when I realized how I wanted to plan out the um, overall painting, uh, some of the more disproportionate aspects of the anatomy actually serve to make it a little bit better, like make it a little bit more unique as well. The one thing I did hate about doing a lot of the pencil work was having to erase a few things. I wanted to make sure enough of everything was dark, but not too dark. And luckily for me, in the end, the canvas actually was able to absorb the paint enough to the point where I would actually be able to cover a large majority of the pencil work. All right, so now that the under sketch is finished, I am kind of satisfied with that one. Uh, it matches the thumbnail a lot more. Sadly, I couldn't fit in the hair. I needed this thing to be really big. And it finally got too cold, so I decided to cover my head. Haircuts do that thing. And I have been enjoying my book so far. So, under sketch complete. On to the next part. I kind of forgot what the next part is. Um, we'll figure that out. So it turns out that important thing that I apparently forgot, thank you past me, was to actually, you know, start painting. So that is exactly what I did. And luckily for me, I was actually able to get everything right the first time. Thanks to that grid that I took what seemed to be 17 years to properly draw out onto the canvas, everything really turned out well. I ended up just starting off to fill um, each box with the particular combination of paint that I needed and I got along very very nicely. The pencils again really didn't destroy the uh, under well the over painting at, that I ended up doing. I ended up skipping a lot of footage over about what 40 minutes worth because it just didn't sit right with all the time lapse footage it wouldn't have sped up the right way and I wanted to keep some type of flow with the video so we are now with the nose and a large majority of the face this took less than a couple of hours actually for at least this half of the face and then another two days for the rest of the painting because I decided to take two days off for uh, emotional distress I think I should say it like that, but <laughs> yeah, I think I'll leave it there. But um, once again, the painting really, really came together once I got around the nose. I think the nose was the most important part because since it was, you know, in the middle, everything had to sit around it. Uh, and also during this time, I was able to finish reading uh, a Feast for Crows by George R. R. Mar Martin. It's the fourth book in the Song of Ice and Fire series, or you may all, you all may better know it as the Game of Thrones book series. Uh, as of today, I had just finished reading the book and it was absolutely great. As usual, Martin kills off a lot of uh, characters that I actually kind of liked, and I was saddened, but it was for the glory of the story as I always say. So now that we are um, on the second half of the face, we are filling in the boxes almost literally. Um, this is basically how the uh, client wanted the face to seem. He wanted to go along with a particular style that he's uh, showed me the reference for. So I took that, ran with it, and I kept the boxes. Well, I actually moved them to the left side of the face technically instead of what they were on the right originally and in doing so I made sure that the eye was you know 
right? And I ended up painting inside of that eye box to make something really, really funny looking. And I took pictures of that plenty of times. So now uh, the main color that I used to fill in this face was actually red ochre. I have no idea what particular combination of red or brown or whatever color that actually may be, but I really enjoyed it because the main color scheme was burnt umber and orange, as you can see in the bottom of the video. And also during this time, uh, there was a thunderstorm, or at least it may not be right now, but towards the end of the video, there was a thunderstorm that was just happening in my area and because some of my friends were down the street and I was in a phone call with them we were all freaking out and I decided to not turn off any lights and in fact I moved a couple around to make sure I get the best lighting for the video <sighs> overall this was pretty fun and right now because of how the uh, I'll say boxes because they are they are extremely misshapen right now and I go over those later. They were very very helpful when it came to uh, trying not to make any mistakes because instead of just being overly cautious I painted over certain things and then I was able to paint over once again. And the nose detail here is one of my favorite pieces of this entire um, painting because of how much I didn't really consider certain things and how much the brush the brush strokes actually drew the nose outline itself. And now onto the lips. I uh, don't really have much to say about the lips. Uh, I'm just glad they turned out right and they are supposed to be slightly misaligned because these are two faces overlaid over each other. I'm just I'm just really glad they turned out right. And the one thing I learned about using paint is that black and white do not help when it comes to the particular lighting or darkening of paint. It's always best to use the complementary color instead of just black or white. So yeah, that was really helpful. And even before I started, uh, even before I started painting or even started working on some preliminary sketches for the painting, I ended up using my um, old textbook for painting as well as my color mixing Bible, which really was a savior in this uh, particular case. That really helped when it comes to properly mixing the skin tone for the, um, it would be the left side of the face this, um, that we're looking at. And onto the eye, the eye was once again very fun. I had to just make sure the eye was wide enough. And once I got that right, I moved on to the eyebrow. The eyebrow is going to be, well, the first eyebrow here is going to be a combination of more orange than it is burnt umber. And then the second eyebrow is going to end up being a combination of red ochre, burnt sienna, and a little bit of orange. I did a lot of paint mixing and luckily for me, not much of it went to waste. Even though I did buy a lot of paint already, um, that was mm, tantamount, I should say. I bought about, what was it? Uh, I'm looking at them right now. I think it was about 14 entire tubes of Master's Touch paint. And in particular, I bought three whole tubes of both orange and um, burnt umber. I added on raw umber just in case, and as soon as I saw the uh, red ochre right under all of the other paint at the very bottom of the rack at the Hobby Lobby I was at, I took two of those and kind of just ran with it. And I'm so glad I found that uh, red ochre because it, as you see, really did work out. And I was extremely proud of how it actually did. And the highlights for the nose, I ended up smudging with a bit of the uh, wet paint that was already on here. And that made the smudge a bit more natural because a particular white on the nose, uh, too much white on the nose didn't really didn't make it look as best as it could. Well, at least in my eyes, so. Uh, 
technically that would mean it was subjective, but I'm not sure. All right, and uh, there was a lot more mixing right here because once I came in with the flat brush to get the eyebrows, well, the eyelashes, I said, so I can't talk anymore. The eyelashes, I should say. So yeah, hmm. I'm trying to figure out what else I need to say here, but honestly, I'm just going on with uh, the eyelashes on the other side. I wanted to make them a bit more, uh, a lot more different actually because of how the arrangement of the faces were and that actually brings me into how I mixed all the paint I used a well an older canvas from July of last year and it was an oil it was a painting well the canvas I used was of an oil painting that I really didn't like how it turned out so I instead just literally laid a lot of paint over that and started to use that as my little board palette. I think that was one of the better ideas instead of actually just um, going ahead and buying a whole new paint uh, paint uh, palette cover. Whoa. Okay, I forgot the name of it again. <sighs> twice, that's twice now. So basically I ended up just putting a couple of nails where my fingers were and being able to hold it right there and That allowed me to mix a lot of paint and it also because the canvases were very similar Even though they were even though one was covered to the brim with paint um, It allowed me to see how the paint itself would uh, just feel on canvas and see how texture could allow for the skin of the portrait to pop out which comes in later because a lot of the a lot of what you'll end up seeing in the end of the painting was done after I was done recording everything. I ended up recording just the main process overall of the painting. Um, and right now, I'll, I am just adding on some very minuscule and minute details that honestly aren't even on camera right now. And. Uh, that's what I kind of get for letting everything roll and not pay attention. On to the hair, or at least what you may seem think that uh, think to be the hair. I moved everything back. I realigned my um, apron and got to the hair. So I decided to keep the hair at a darker brown than the uh, skin of the portrait. So I ended up using a little bit more raw umber and a little less burnt umber along with a combination of burnt sienna and a little bit more orange. And right now I am just getting, giving a slight hint to the ears. I made the ear too light here, so I ended up going ahead and just turning that into an orange ear instead of a white and burnt sienna ear, which would technically be a very light tan brown. And now we're just, oh yeah, so I actually ended up adding a collar to the neck. Um, I'm not sure why I decided to keep the collar. I did like how the neck um, was there because that's how some of the other pictures that the client gave me as reference looked. Um, but I ended up just keeping it like that just to have it, um, have it, how did, I, how did I phrase it the first time? Because I forgot once again. I'll say it blended in with the canvas more. So with that, with the collar, I ended up taking black and some raw umber little bit of white as you can see on the highlight here and I ended up just making that which worked very well and now all along to the rest of the hair and that was more or less it right there so so this was a very long and tedious process but I've, I've probably said that about 18 times so far and I really mean it. The week before I started, I was ridden with anxiety of how to properly start everything. I wasn't sure how the paint would properly turn out. I wasn't sure the color palette I, well, the client picked for me would work out for me. But upon reading my old books uh, from paint, uh, on painting and color mixing, I began to grow a lot more confident in everything that was uh, thrown my way, honestly. And a massive roller coaster of emotions bet between filming that led to this, 
and my entire mindset during the entire the whole ordeal was fun but not something that I think I should stay in the entire time I call this piece Beretta I don't know why my cat is here um, I mm, this is so far the biggest commission piece I've done so far and uh, I await for the next big one. This thing is about almost the size of me at 60 inches tall and it was difficult to lug around. Not like I took it outside this room much but again fun ordeal. Uh, I love how the majority of this rendering process came out especially with this side of the skin and this area just it worked because the color that I found when I bought all the paint immediately popped into my mind about this other half especially with the reference that I was using so I'm so glad I used red ochre for this instead of the reddish orange ish brown ish that I was going to use uh, so so much so much to say in so little time um, Honestly, that's all I can really say, and that is kind of the conclusion of the video. I hope you all enjoyed the process, or at least as much as I was able to document, because between filming, I did do more and more work, and right now, this may not even be the finished process. Maybe. I don't feel like working on it too much, so I'll look at it tomorrow. Uh, so. That makes me it. Again. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will check you all out next time. So here is a uh, short little panoramic shot and view of the entire painting. Again, a uh, very fun, fun process overall. You can see a lot of the mistakes throughout, but I think those are really what make the painting itself. So uh, until next time, you guys, I will see you all later. Make sure you like the video and comment and tell me what you think about all the voiceover work so far as well as um, how I should go about presenting a couple of other videos uh, in the future. So again, until then, let me uh, talk to you guys later.